So I began to really work with the organization to figure out what diversity really meant. And, uh, and so I want to talk to you. The journey was uh, a powerful journey. Uh, we started by adding people. We called that representation. Uh, and then those people came and those people left. Uh, because the environment wasn't uh, conducive for that level of uh, diversity. And so we then said, you know, we can't do it that way. We first have to raise con consciousness. And we did a lot of work, uh, not only with staff, but with our board around what does this really mean? Uh, and what we decided was uh, we needed to go deep. And so everything we talked about with our grantees, we did ourselves. We studied uh, in unconscious bias. We went through training. We hired white men as full diversity partners. Everybody in the organization went through it. Um, <clears throat> and then we hired more people of color. And this time, what we decided was as you bring people of color and women into the organization, um, you have to call it expansion and expansion, not inclusion. Because inclusion still infers a power, as if we're including you, as opposed to we're expanding our knowledge base. And so as we were learning, we really talked about the work, we wrote about the work. We actually now have a toolkit that's called How to Assess the Readiness of an Organization to Bring in a Diverse Workforce. Um, we then brought in the diverse workforce. Uh, we learned from that workforce. And we've now talked about what really is called a, an authorizing environment. How do you create an authorizing environment so that when we become more diverse, it is embracing for all and nurturing for all? And after all of this work, 30 years later, I want you to know that our board is now 60% people of color. Um, our, thank you. 50% women. And our staff is 45% people of color.